can I ask Sal to talk to you about her report? Well, it's been said famously in films and actually on real life, if you remember it, Houston, we have a problem. We have a very serious problem about diversity within the party, and it's not just about parliamentarians. So being a naughty girl, the first thing I did when having been given a remit by FE, who asked me to look solely at the issue of candidates, was to say, I can't just look at candidates. I've got to look much more broadly at the party and the mechanisms by which we support, develop, assess candidates themselves. Because the diversity of a party as a whole needs really reviewing and, and how we can improve on that. And the first thing I'd say <coughs> about my review um, is that it isn't a magic answer. There is no magic answer to this really difficult problem. And those of you who were at the conference last September will know that the party is split, absolutely split, on how we achieve these issues. There are those who say we're a party of liberal principles and it's important that the best candidate is always selected. Those people usually recognize that there is an issue. But on the other side, we've got those who say, come on, we've been waiting long enough, whether it's women, whether it's people from ethnic minority backgrounds or disabled people, whatever. And the path I've had to try and tread on this has been to find a mechanism to bring both sides together so we can start to solve the problem together. And that's why, and if you're interested in the review, it is up on the party website. I'm sorry, I had asked for it to be in the daily announcement, and it's not. But if you're interested in the details and you can't find it on the party website, email me at sal.brinton at libdems.org.uk, and I'll forward you a copy of it, because it's, it's not secret at all. Um, the key recommendations are that we, and I'm sorry to use jargon, but we have now got to mainstream diversity throughout the country. That means it's no longer my problem. It's no longer Vicky Booth's problem as the diversity manager for the party. It's each and every one of our problems, which means finding people to be candidates who come from the underrepresented groups. It means supporting them right the way through the process of that first conversation of saying, have you thought about applying to become a candidate, through to getting them actually through the assessment process, getting them financial support that they need to make that happen, getting them onto the leadership program, because particularly <coughs> for excellent candidates, we really want to have a leadership program, I'll come on to the detail of that in just a second, that means something to the party. A lot of my review is about party process, and most of you will not be interested in it. But both the diversity engagement group and the FE Joint States Committee group that is monitoring the implementation of this report are going to be looking at making sure that there are toolkits available for regions and local parties, support available, helpline available. One of the things we want to do, for example, is to say that every candidate should have access to budgeting and mentoring. But if you are from an underrepresented group, you will get it in a, probably in a different way. Probably, initially, through the diversity office at Cowley Street, and you'll be allocated a mentor who will have particular expertise in whatever your issue is. Whether it's a young working mum, or perhaps you're actually going into a community and you don't, need, you don't know enough about the background, you want support in making sure that you can uh, work with them effectively. Now, I've come in for some stick with individuals about the leadership programme. Can I say this is not an A-list? This is not about patronage. It is a very carefully designed programme that will get the best of our candidates from underrepresented groups. It will give them advanced training, it will give them financial support, and it will actually then get them into the seats that are needed. And one of the points in the motion is that if a priority seat has any applicants who are in the leadership programme, they will be obliged to shortlist two of them, assuming more than two apply. If none apply, then obviously it doesn't matter. That is as close as we are getting to a target. And I had a, a long and difficult email correspondence with a member of the party who thought that was way too much. Way too much. And I just explained that this isn't about insisting, it's not about all party shortlists, they're all shortlists for a particular group at all. It's actually about making sure that our best candidates from underrepresented groups get a fair crack at those lists. But actually, it's much more than that. It's about making sure we grow people within those local parties who are then able to apply the seats. 
Now, for those of you who've got MPs, that can be quite difficult. I understand that, in which case you won't necessarily be looking at standing in your own seat. But Lynn Featherston's story about how she stuck it out for 17 years, a substantial number of years. It wasn't that bad. It may have just felt, felt, felt a very long time. But it was an outstanding way of growing your own seat. And again, that's the sort of thing the leadership program can do to support candidates. Um, I think the only other thing I want to say is that um, the funding that we are looking for at the moment, we are getting interest in supporting these diverse candidates, but it's got to be for a top group who are really supported. There isn't going to be an enormous amount of money available, but there will be enough to get a good number of, of candidates properly supported. It will not be administered like the last diversity fund. If any of you were coming <coughs> to yeah, about in front, we were never quite clear about where it was coming from. It will all be done through the leadership program. It will be open and transparent. It will report back to federal executive. So there will be a mechanism for people to see how it operates. And the leadership program, um, getting onto the leadership program, you will have to have been selected, um, approved as a candidate, probably with a green. We're just sorting that out at the moment with ECC. You would need then also to meet a competency framework that we are creating at the moment. And then there's an interview and references. So it's very different from Cameron's A-list. And it's a real point I make, want to make to you. This is not the leader saying, I want X. This is all about the skills of our candidates and then supporting them through. I said I'd only speak for five minutes and I'm running out of time. Um, but I really want to take questions. And if there isn't time for questions today, again, just email me with your question. I'm more than happy to respond. Thank you, sir. Thank you.